today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is design of distillation column the first part that is the lecture one will discuss about the very important things about the concept of the design now let us start with the design of distillation column so design means we are going to uh, carry out energy balance material balance and some other designing aspects of the column so as you know that we have discussed about the basic layout of the distillation column where feed top and bottom reboiler condenser reflux drum these are the essential component of distillation column so so designing we are going to consider the designing and the, in the designing the first thing is basically the material balance and the energy balance so as a chemical petrochemical engineering background we are very much concerned about the material balance and energy balance inside the distillation column that is uh, one of the important aspect of the designing of the distillation column or any equipment so if we think about the designing aspects so there are two very common type of the designing methods used for the distillation column one method is a graphical method and second method is the empirical correlations so even uh, the third method is a part of empirical correlations so in the graphical method uh, some are very famous one of the very famous method is the mccabe thiele method and the second method lewis is sorrel method that is also the graphical method and the third method is the ponch and savret method so graphical method means by using the graphs by using some uh, uh, manual calculations we have to design the distillation column and all the basic informations that is required for the distillation column um, will be calculated evaluated the second uh, broad classification is the empirical correlations this is the rigorous method means this is not our easy method this is not the graphical method here we require so many calculations so many steps are avail uh, available but obviously that will be a more practical and more uh, uh, have the use as compared to the graphical method the graphical method normally uh, give the value up to the approximation and uh, a tentative value not the exact value of the distillation column designing but in the empirical equations where we are going to use the typical equations this is that's why this is called the rigorous method and to solve these rigorous calculations and equations we can use the computer so that's why the third method is a part of the empirical equation and that is a modeling and simulation method where we are going to model the distillation column equation and we have to simulate using some software in the computer so in this way we can design the distillation column but in our talk we are only concerned about the mccabe thiele method designing and we can also brief about the ponch and separate method so we will discuss these two methods that is based on the graphical method of the distillation that is the simplest method of distillation column now come to uh, look about what is going on in the distillation column so we are going to look about the flow of the vapor and look at inside the distillation column how it happens in the distillation column so look here this is a simple distillation column where the feed is going to charge into the distillation column so we know that the upper portion of the feed is known as the enriching section and the lower portion is known as the stripping section we'll discuss about later on why we call it enriching and stripping section so there are two parts of the column enriching section and stripping section so we have a trays inside the column so say let us assume these are the trays in the enriching section and these are the trays in the stripping sections so what happened the, all the liquids that is uh, inside uh, the column uh, if it is from the top it is coming from the top to down this is the flow of the liquid means the liquid is always flowing from the top to down so in the enriching section as well as in the stripping section also the liquid from the top to bottom uh, this is the flow of the liquid but as far as the vapor flow is concerned so vapor is basically flowing from the bottom to top this is the flow of the vapor in the enriching section and this is the flow of the vapor in the stripping section so basically uh, overall if you see that this is liquid flow that is from the top to bottom and this is the vapor flow from bottom to top liquid flow is basically governed by the uh, gravitational force and we all know that everything that is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, that uh, everything is uh, under the influence of the gravitational force and always going into the downward side but what about the vapors vapors are normally for flow because of the pressure difference this is the tendency of the flow of the vapor so if the high pressure uh, always going from the high pressure to the uh, to the lower pressure this is the nature of the flow of the vapor so high pressure is available in the column at the bottom section this is the high pressure zone this is the high pressure zone and this is a low pressure zone so so we, that that's why the vapor is moved from the high pressure to the low, low pressure that is from bottom to top one 
So it, it doesn't mean that it is uh, working against the gravitation. Basically, the flow of the vapor is always evaluated with the help of the pressure. If anyhow you can maintain the high pressure at the top and the low pressure at the bottom, then obviously uh, the vapor will, pop, uh, will flow from the top to bottom. So the vapor flow is basically uh, based on the vapor, uh, pressure drop or the pressure uh, gradient. So that's the thing about the vapor flow and liquid flow. So in the distillation column, so please be remember about the flow of the liquid and flow of the vapor in the, inside the column. Now come to the flow of the vapor and liquid uh, between the trays inside the distillation column, how it looks like in the trays. For example, let us look at a close picture of the distillation column where we are uh, going to discuss about the, these are the three trays, these are different trays. So if you closely look the, uh, these trays, there are options for flowing of the liquid. So how the liquid is flowing inside the trays, basically that is that the picture is showing here. So this is a liquid that is flowing. And after that, the space provided for the liquid to come into the bo bottom side. So and 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 so on. So this is a way the flow of the liquid and this is a fl flow of the vapors. So this is basically the picture of the uh, flow of liquid and vapor. And if you see these zones, these are the zones here. The, these are zones where we can see that vapor and liquid both are intermixing here. So interaction of the vapor and liquid is possible at the, all these trays. And these zones are basically established on the trays. So on the tray, vapor and liquid interactions are taking place. And it means that the mass transfer are taking place. So mass transfer is going on in the uh, between the vapor and liquid at the tray. So mass transfer is going on. It means that there are composition change between the liquid and vapor. So we can conclude that the composition of the vapor as well as the composition of liquid and even the vapor that is leaving at every tray are different. So the, if you have a, some composition of vapor here, you will see that the composition that is leaving from this tray, this composition is different from the below of the, uh, uh, that, that is the previous uh, vapor. And this composition is totally different from the previous vapor. And this composition is totally different from the previous vapor. So all these uh, vapors have the different compositions because they are interacting uh, with the liquids and mass transfer is taking place at the uh, trays. That's why trays are necessary in the distillation column where the liquid and vapor are mixed together and the mass transfer is taking place and equilibrium is established. And really that is therefore liquid equilibrium data is generated on these trays. So that is an important thing. So this is a, uh, how the vapor and liquid are flowing inside the uh, trays. That is a closed look of these things. Now come to the next one. Okay, this is, uh, uh, the nomenclature of the uh, vapor and liquid that is flowing inside. So let us take the example of tray. This is a single tray we have taken. This is a single tray. Say this is an nth tray. General form of the tray normally we take not one, not two, but nth tray. Nth is any general form. It can be one, it can be two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Any tray in, inside the column. So obviously, uh, one, one vapor is coming, entering in that tray. One vapor is leaving from that tray. One portion of the liquid is entering in that tray, one portion of the liquid leaving from that tray. This is the overall material that is interacting in that particular tray. So we can uh, name all these things. For example, uh, this is an nth tray, and any tray uh, uh, above of this tray is called as a nth minus one. Means, and below of this tray, if suppose any tray is present uh, after the nth tray, that is known as nth plus one tray. Means the tray is that is below the nth tray and that before the nth tray is nth minus one. So it means that from the top to bottom, that will be start one, two, three, four, five, six. If suppose it is the fifth tray, so it means that uh, above of this tray will be the fourth one and below of this tray will be the sixth one. That is a concept. So we can provide this general format nth tray. Before that is nth minus one tray. After that is nth plus one tray. Please be remember, this is an important thing for the nomenclature. So we can give the name of all these materials because these tra these vapors these vapors are coming these vapors are coming from the nth plus one tray, and is it coming leaving from nth plus one tray and entering the nth tray? So we can say the flow rate of the vapor is v n plus one. This is a flow rate. N plus one is the name of the tray from where this vapor is coming from, and similarly we can give this this vapor flow rate flow rate of vapor Vn. Why Vn? Because this is the vapor that is leaving from the nth tray. So that is the uh, concept behind the nomenclature. Similarly for the liquid and this liquid, this liquid is basically the flow rate of liquid that is coming from the n minus one tray. So that's called the L n minus one. And this is a vapor that is leaving from the nth tray. So flow rate of liquid that is a L, uh, Ln. 
So these are the way to represent the flow rates of all these vapors and all these liquids. I hope you can understand what is the meaning of these uh, basically the nomenclatures. So that is important for our study. Now come to the uh, some other aspects. So we have already discussed about the symbols that we are going to use. L we, can, we are going to use L for the flow rate of liquid, V for the flow rate of vapor, LN means the flow rate of the liquid at anathetary, uh, LN capital N uh, flow rate of liquid at last uh, anathetary. Okay. This is the difference basically the we can provide this uh, small n for the general format and capital N for the standard format uh, that that is the basically the symbols we can use it and uh, vn flow rate of the vapor at nth tray and vn flow rate of the vapor at the last tray so this is also uh, one method to represent all these things so earlier in the previous slide we have presented capital n for the general format but that can be read as a, a small n so uh, later on we can uh, correct it now come to the x is the composition in the liquid phase y is the composition in the vapor phase these are the nomenclature we are going to use in our distillation column design and uh, uh, in the material balance now come to the first one that is the mechabethylene method we are going to design the mechabethylene method so in the mechabethylene method we have certain assumptions so that is important so there is a one assumption in the mechabethylene method and then assumption is known as the constant molar flow or the equimolar flow so what is the meaning of equimolar flow so you can explain it that is the accumulative flow in the tower between the feed inlet and top tray and feed inlet and bottom tray means feed inlet top tray means between the in inside the enriching section the flow of the liquid and vapor is accumulative and inside the uh, stripping section the flow of vapor and liquid are accumulative accumulative means flow of the vapor is same at each and every tray in the enriching section and flow of the liquid is equal in each at uh, at every tray in the reaching section. Similarly, for the stripping section also, the equimolar flow means the flow of vapor is same for each and every tray, in uh, uh, separately for the enriching section and separately for the stripping section. So this is the meaning of the uh, basically equimolar flow. We'll discuss a little more about in the next slide how it can be achieved. What are the possibility that it can be achieved? This assumption is possible when the one mole of saturated vapor is condensed means the vapor that is coming into any tray when it is condensed one mole of vapor is condensed then the energy released by the condensation is sufficient to vaporize the one mole of saturated liquid so one one mole of vapor is condensed one mole of saturated liquid will be vaporizes so what happened if this is happening there so it means no net change in the liquid and vapor flow rate and the actual uh, uh, you can say the net change is zero there will be no change. What happened? One mole is vaporized, one mole is condensed. The, again, the from the liquid, it will be vaporized. So overall, there will be no change. And how this can be possible? This can only be possible when the heat of vaporization of saturated liquid mixture at given condition is equal to the heat of condensation of saturated vapor mixture. If this is possible for any type of the mixture in the binary system, then the constant molar flow is possible. Otherwise, it is not possible. Actually, in the real case, it is not possible until unless heat of vaporization and heat of condensation of the mixture is same so obviously this is not the same for each and every cases normally these values are different that's why this is that that's why we have taken this as assumption so how it can be achieved now let us look about the graphical representation so in the graphical representation now look about this is a tray so n n tray n minus one tray and n minus uh, n plus one tray you can draw Read is a general format and is a general format tray. So vapor that uh, this is a vapor that is uh, uh, going inside the N tray, leaving from the tray N plus one. That's why we call it N V N plus one. Means leaving from the N plus one tray and entering into the another tray. So this is a vapor. For example, we assume this vapor is a 200 kilomoles. Okay, clear. Now come to the uh, concept of that. If one kilomole of the vapor condenses what happened one kilo mole of this vapor is condenses now the remaining vapors the obviously you have to minus one in 200 minus one is equal to 199 kilo moles this is the number of moles that is leaving from the um, you can say leaving from the earth tray so this is a vn because one uh, one one mole of this vapor is condenses so it is going to the liquid phase that's why this is 1 minus 1, that is 199. Now come to the liquid phase. 
So liquid is coming from the upper tray that is L n minus 1. This is coming and what happened? This is 100 kmol. Suppose we have assumed. So because heat from the vapor, what happened? Heat is released because of condensation. Because of condensation. That is sufficient to vaporize the 1 mole of liquid. What happened? 1 mole of liquid is vaporizes here. So the net liquid that is leaving from this one is 100 minus 1. That is 99. 1 mole of liquid is vaporizes here and this this uh, liquid that is vaporizes is now a part of vapor so you can say this liquid is from this liquid it is going to the, the in the vapor phase and this uh, condensed is now going to the liquid phase so vn plus 1 is equal to the 199 kilo mole of the original vapors plus 1 uh, mole of the vapors coming from the liquid phase so it is again equal to the 200 kilo moles that is same as the uh, the vapors that is uh, coming inside the tray similarly liquid flow at leaving the tray that is ln 99 mole of the original one and one mole is coming from the vapor phase one one mole of vapor is condensed that way is again 100 so we can summarize that ln minus 1 is equal to ln and vn is equal to vn plus 1 so that's called the equimolar flow flow of the vapor is same and flow of the liquid is same at each and every trace similarly you can elaborate for uh, the first tray for the second tray for the third tray and so on so we can summarize it that uh, the l1 or l0 or l2 is equal to ln is equal to l we can put that value is l l is the flow of the liquid in the top portion that is the in the enriching section similarly v1 is equal to v2 is equal to v3 is equal to vn plus 1 is equal to v that is called as a flow rate of vapor in the enriching section in the top to top field in the shift section so uh, these are the basically one two means that these are the uh, name of the tray because we are counting the tray from the top for example this is a column sorry this is a column so this this is the first tray so any liquid that is leaving from this uh, tray is l0 so it is, it is it is l1 and what is the meaning of l0 l0 is the one extra outside tray, uh, liquid that is coming to there in the first tray this is called the l0 L0 is the liquid that is coming from outside of the column on the first tray that is L0 and L1 is the liquid leaving from tray 1, L2 is the liquid leaving from tray 2 and so on. Similarly V1, V1 is the liquid leaving from tray 1, this is the vapor, for the vapor V1, this is for example uh, tray number 2, so this is a vapor V2 and so on. So what it means that the wave flow rate of liquid at each and every trace inside the enriching section is same and that is equal to the L and flow rate of vapor at each and every trace in the inside of the enriching section is same and it is denoted by V. Similarly, we can also set the same method for the bottom section. Bottom section means enriching section. In the enriching section, flow rate of the liquid at each and every tray between the feet to bottom that is enriching section equal and similarly flow rate of vapor at each and every section in the enriching section is equal. Is equal. So this is the concept of the Maccabre theory. This is the assumptions because of the, these assumptions the equations will be very simplified in a very simple way. So, so that's why you have to remember but uh, please take note that flow rate of vapor and liquid in at all is not always same. That is the important thing means because in between these two sections there are feed so because of a feed these flow rates what are the flow rates of energy section that is not same in the case of the stripping section both flow rates are the different because of the feed we'll discuss it again in the few uh, few next slides but overall this is a concept of the cabethylene so this is all about for the today's lecture hope you got some understanding about the basics of the cabethylene thank you very much